Should you be hiking in these or these? What advice can I give you on this topic? First off, best advice about hiking footwear is don't listen to anyone that's trying to tell you to buy a certain brand or model because everyone's feet are different and what works for one may not work for another. This is seriously the hardest piece of hiking gear to figure out. And I remember when I was on a mission to find a comfortable hiking shoe. I had gone through eight different brands trying to find something that worked and nothing seemed to fit the bill. Some shoes were too narrow, some too large, others just flat out uncomfortable. Finding your shoe might take a while, but have patience. I'm gonna give you some tips to make this process less painful. First, let's start at the beginning of the topic. Boots or shoes? You can always change your mind later or use shoes for certain situations and boots for others. Shoes and trail runners have definitely become the norm these days, and that's because gear has gotten a lot lighter over the years. Boots used to be a necessity due to the sheer weight old school backpackers had to carry, but now the average new backpacker is sporting a base weight of around 25 pounds or less. Base weight is the weight of all your gear minus food, water, and consumables. It's a static number and doesn't usually change from trip to trip. The lower your base weight, the less need for a boot. However, boots are still very relevant. For instance, maybe you need that extra ankle support or stability, or maybe you enjoy the waterproofness that some boots have to offer. Having wet feet sometimes in trail runners isn't for everyone, and that's fine. You get whatever's comfortable for you. Everyone has their own style of hiking, and some just like hiking in boots. For me, boots just make me feel more tired at the end of a long day of hiking. I constantly use the same muscles when I move because boots don't let my foot flex the way it should. They cause me knee and IT band problems, and I genuinely feel a trail runner just works better overall for me. Now, I could go on and on about the debate between trail runners and boots, but it would be useless. You should get whatever fits your style. So let's fast forward to your first pair of shoes. I highly suggest buying from a brick and mortar store where you can try the shoe on in person. If a good shoe store isn't available in your area, then use Amazon or Zappos. Amazon and Zappos allow easy returns as long as the shoes aren't dirty. Some great advice here is to put your shoes on and leave them on in your house for at least six hours. You'll know by the end of that time if the footwear you pick could work for hiking. Try several brands and models. You don't even need to walk around your house, just leave them on the entire time. If your sides or the tops of your feet hurt by the end of that six hours, return them. They aren't gonna work for you. Sizing wise for boots, typically you'll wanna go with a thicker sock for cushioning. So you should size up a half or even a full size. For trail runners or shoes, use your normal size or a half size up should be fine. My process for determining the perfect size is I put my shoe on, kick my heel back, and then I take my thumb and put it at the end of my toes. I like to have a full thumbs width between my big toe and the tip of my shoe. I'll leave some links to some popular models in the description, but keep in mind, they are just to get your search started and are in no way a recommendation of what you should get. Remember, get what's comfortable for your hiking style. Talking socks, there's a few things that you should look at. And don't be afraid to spend money on a good pair. For instance, Darn Tough, as long as they maintain their current quality, are amazing, and they have a lifetime warranty. Socks are gonna add cushioning to your footwear and reduce friction between your foot and your shoe. You'll want something that dries quickly while still providing some comfort. If you're getting blisters, take a look at liner socks like Injinji Toe Socks, as they can work wonders for new hikers and the blisters you may get early on. A blister is formed as the body's natural response to friction on less than dry feet. It's a terrible response, but there's really nothing we can do to block it. Uh, the use of foot balms and things like body glide sticks work like magic for these situations, but eventually you may find that you don't need anything for your feet as they get used to hiking. Personally, I recommend taking your shoes and socks off multiple times per throughout the day, even for a long lunch to help you keep your foot dry. You can switch out your socks for a dry pair as well. I typically bring two pairs of socks and keep alternating them. Uh, I also bring a light dress sock or sock liner uh, to sleep in just so I have something dry for bed, which also keeps your quilt and sleeping bag clean. At some point, we all have a stream crossing, and I've learned over thousands of miles to just keep your shoes on during these crossings. Rocks are wet and slippery, and even more so with bare feet. There's nothing worse than getting your bare foot wedged under a rock and falling over. Trail runners, once wet, will dry out throughout the day or overnight. A waterproof boot, however, can get wet in several ways, including water running in over the opening for your foot or from sweat throughout the day. And once it's wet, it does take boots a few days to fully dry on their own. So what should you be looking for when it comes to trail runners? Aside from comfort, stack height is probably going to be the biggest factor for shoes. Typically, the higher the stack height, the more cushion your shoe will have. However, the higher the stack height, the bigger chance there is to roll your ankles, so be careful. For boots, you really need to look at the material it's made from. Gore-Tex, sometimes listed as GTX, is a waterproof membrane material used in many boots. 
you'll see the word breathable material when it comes to Gore-Tex, which I guess technically it's not rubber, so yeah, it's breathable, but your feet are gonna sweat in it. There are many other types of waterproof membranes out there, but I believe Gore-Tex is the way to go if you want a waterproof boot. Now, if you need or want ankle support, but don't want the cons that come with boots, remember that hiking shoes often come in a mid-height version and provide some ankle support. I see these shoes getting increasingly popular out on the trail. One last thing I wanna to touch on before ending the video is gaiters. Gaiters basically keep the debris out of your shoe. And as a bonus, they tend to keep my shoes tied throughout the day, which I struggle with all the time. I personally use a brand called Dirty Girl Gaiters for most of my trips as I hate getting debris in my shoes and stopping to dump it out. So, I wanna hear from you all. What is your favorite hiking footwear? Is it boots, trail runners, sandals, or something else? List your brand and model down in the comments below to help out the new hikers. I'll also leave some links to some popular makes and models for boots, trail runners, gaiters, and socks, so check the video description below. If you found any use in this video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing, and I will see you on the trail. Thanks, everybody. A blister is formed as the body's natural response to once wet, it does take buttes, 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 take some buttes. Sweat, it does take buttes, buttes. I did it again. Why can't I say this word?